Hello, and thank you for listening. We are Family Fellowship Church of Christ, a spiritually connected church with a fierce determination to serve God and families. We are located at 4410 East Johnstown Road in Gahanna, Ohio. Our service times are every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Or you can join us for our Bible classes Sunday mornings at 945 or Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Now, enjoy this message from our senior pastor, Benjamin Hall. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Benjamin Hall coming to you from what is an empty sanctuary here at our church uh, building. Uh, As you know by now, uh, Family Fellowship and our leadership uh, had, with consultation and consideration of uh, the health professionals at the Ohio Department of Health and the Columbus Health Department have decided to postpone all in-person worship services, Bible studies, uh, meetings, uh, rehearsals, and uh, gatherings here at Family Fellowship uh, until April 5th, Sunday, April 5th, Palm Sunday. And so what we've decided to do, uh, at least for our Sunday morning worship, is to come to you with a brief message uh, and to share with you from the gospel of Jesus Christ what we are learning now more than ever, or what we're being reinforced to us is that the church is not a building. And so matter, no matter where you are today, if you are a part of the body of Christ, you are the church. If you are watching this from your home living room, maybe from your kitchen table, maybe from your home office, uh, uh, or maybe you're at work on break and you're getting a chance to watch this, you are the church and we are having church. I want to thank um, um, our church leadership for their uh, care and concern as we uh, prayed about what to do. And we are um, uh, confident that, that, that God has directed us to, to cancel our, or to postpone our in-person uh, services. And so with that, I want to share with you because uh, what uh, has uh, gripped me at least over the last couple of weeks is the uh, presence and uh, uh, been a, and been bombarded with uh, news media reports and with text messages and memes and so many things that uh, that definitely uh, portray to me that there is a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, might I say hysteria going on around our current. Uh, uh, situation as we deal with the pandemic uh, outbreak around the globe and now hitting us home here in the United States and more uh, uh, um, importantly, or I shouldn't say importantly, more specifically here in, in Ohio and in Central Ohio around the uh, corona uh, virus. Uh, it's just interesting to me as I prepare to, um, to come to you and talk to you with this message and some, some questions I began to think of. Why, why do we immediately think something is wrong when the doctor's office calls and asks uh, to schedule you for a follow-up appointment a week after your annual exam? Why does our heart start racing when we're pulled over by a police officer on the interstate? Why do we assume the worst when Maybe we receive a call from the IRS uh, and, and they ask us to return the call ASAP. Why have we cleared the shelves of toilet paper at our local grocery stores in response to a virus that attacks our respiratory system and not necessarily our, uh, our bowels? Our response to these situations is often driven by fear. Our immediate responses to situations such as these are often powered by thoughts of a a worst case scenario. Our thinking that the worst thing that can happen will happen. And family, unfortunately, our thoughts are likely not driven by a sense of peace or sense of goodwill because we have been conditioned through, through life to prepare for the worst while hoping for the best in any and most situations. While there are many things uh, that 
that hinder us. While there are many things uh, that people fear, uh, severe weather, financial calamity, the loss of a loved one, and more recently, a, an infectious disease pandemic, fear in and of itself can be warranted in the sense that it, is, uh, it can be a life-saving response to a life-threatening situation. But fear can also be destructive. Fear can also be crippling. Fear can immobilize us. Fear can hinder our progress. Fear can keep us from living into the fullness of God's blessings over our lives. It's this fear that I want to briefly talk with you about today. Since fear can block us from accomplishing our potential in life and more importantly, our potential in Christ Jesus, let's review what the word has to say about fear and our response to it. Let's consider two definitions that relate to fear. One pertains to our thoughts, while the other relates to our feelings. Fear, as it relates to thoughts, is defined as an idea or a thought or other entity that causes feelings of fear. Notice that the thought causes the feeling. Fear as it relates to feelings is defined as an unpleasant feeling of anxiety or apprehension caused by the presence or anticipation of danger. Again, the feeling is caused by the thought, by the anticipation. We, when we examine these two definitions together, we see that the fear generated by our thoughts creates the fear that we actually feel. First, there is a thought which is followed by a feeling. If you are not fearful in your thinking, then you will not feel fearful in your emotions. Feelings of fear are generated by how we are thinking. So in order to address the crippling feelings of fear that we sometimes experience, we must first address how we think. Consider my examples that I opened up with. Why are we prone to think the worst when confronted with these situations? Why do we seem to be programmed to always think the worst in any particular situation? What if in, uh, uh, in your mind, or what if your mind told you from the start that, uh, that you would be fine? If your mind told you from the start that you would be fine, you would not dwell on everything you knew about the severity of the coronavirus. You wouldn't see yourself being quarantined. You wouldn't worry about being hospitalized or, or worse, you wouldn't think about the possibility of death when you, when you think about the coronavirus. Subsequently, the response to the potential fear is different. It doesn't mean that you're not aware of the possibilities, but you are not crippled by them either. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Remember the definitions of fear and how the thoughts of, 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 of fear lead to the feelings of fear? Well, here, Timothy was dealing with some issues within his church, and the Apostle Paul had to encourage him to refocus his thinking. So he told Timothy that God had not given him the spirit of fear, but he had given him a spirit of power and a spirit of love and a spirit of, of, of a sound mind. Uh, and and, and in, in other words, God had given Timothy all that he needed to do the job that he had called him to do. So he just needed to access this power and access this love and use his sound mind. Likewise, family, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but God has given each and one, one of us a, the, the spirit uh, of power and of courage and of a sound mind. God has given us the, the spirit of power. God has given us courage and resolution. God has given us power to meet difficulties and dangers that we will face in his service. But not only has God given us the spirit of power, but God has given us the spirit of love for him 
and the spirit of love for our brothers and our sisters. A spirit of love which will carry us through all the adversity that we encounter and all of the opposition that we come up against. He's given us a spirit of power and the spirit of love and finally the spirit of a sound mind. The spirit of the quietness of mind. The Holy Spirit family is not the author of a timid or cowardly disposition uh, or, or, um, or of mindless fears. Family, we can handle our afflictions well when we have the strength and the power from God which enables us to do it. Now, I don't want you to miss what I'm about to say. If God has given us power and love and a sound mind, what is he saying about fear? He's saying there is no power in fear, there is no love in fear, and fear is present when a person isn't thinking straight, when a person's mind is not sound. Let, let me show you this. I want to read to you a story from the Gospel of Luke. In this story, Jesus explains the, a kingdom principle that anyone who finds themselves fearful should understand. Turn to the 12th chapter of Luke in your Bibles, and we will begin reading at verse 22. Here, the, bar, the word of God, the gospel of Luke says that, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. And uh, how much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with, think, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If you then be not able to do the thing which is least, how or why are you anxious concerning the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into an oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And seek you not what you shall eat and what you shall drink, neither be of anxious mind. <laughs> For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, but your Father knows what you have need of these things. But rather seek you the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want you to see something in this passage because although Jesus is referring to worrying. Worrying is a sense or is a form of fear. Jesus told his disciples not to worry about their life, what they will eat or what they will wear. He told them that life was more than food for the body and more than clothes. Then, then he gives them an example of the raven and how God takes care of the raven and asks his disciples, are they more important to God than a raven? He gives them another example of the lilies of the field and how God cares for those lilies. He makes a point of telling them that, that if God cares for the grass that would eventually be cast into the oven, how much more would he provide for, him, for them? Jesus wanted his disciples to understand that God understood their needs and was making provision for them. Jesus tells his disciples because God was already providing for them, instead of them seeking such things in life, they were to seek God, and in doing so, everything they needed would be provided. Now look at verse 32. Jesus tells his disciples to fear not because God takes pleasure in giving them the kingdom. Do you understand what this means? 
It means that God takes pleasure in providing for his children. The things that worry us and cause us to fear are those same things that he is willing to already handle for us. This doesn't mean that we will not experience hard times. It doesn't mean that we will not experience trials and tribulation, but we should not be afraid to go through those things when we are doing God's will. If we suffer for the cause of Christ, we will be rewarded for it. It's all about perspective. It's all about thinking. It's all about a sound mind. Our fears are often linked to our self-preservation or our need. And Jesus taught his disciples that that should not be their focus. Our focus, family, should be on him and on his will for our lives. In the midst of the uncertainty of this current pandemic, we can be certain that God is in control, that God still looks, sits high and looks low, and that we have no reason to fear because we serve a God who is able. David said in the Psalms that even though I walk through the shadow of the val valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David also said that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host might encamp, encamp against me, my heart will not fear. The war might arise against me. In spite of this, I shall be confident. David also said in the Psalms, when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I have put my trust. I shall not be afraid. What can mere men do unto me? Can you see the mindset that David had? I want to encourage you to have a, a David mindset as we enter and encounter these next few weeks as we deal with the bombardment of the news that will come to us about uh, more and more people who will be testing positive for the coronavirus. I want us to have a David mindset because regardless of what David faced, he believed in the strength that he encountered and that he was strengthened by that he found in God. Family, we will get through this because God is with us. God has never left us. God is always on a, a watch for us. God is always providing for us. God loves us. God keeps us. And in the midst of all of this, I encourage you to keep strong in your faith to remember to pray not only for yourselves and your own families, but continue to pray for our church family, pray for our community, pray for our government leaders at all levels, pray for the governmental leaders of other nations, pray for our world. We're facing something that many of us have never seen, but it's not new to God. God knew that it was going to happen before we knew it would happen. God is prepared. God was not caught unaware. And because we trust and believe in an almighty God, we can rest assured that God will keep us in the hollow of his hand, that God will hold us and comfort us in the midst of our uncertainty because God has not given us a spirit of fear. Like he gave Timothy, he's given us a spirit of power, he's given us the spirit of love, and he's given us the spirit of a sound mind. <laughs> Until the next time, uh, I encourage you to, to continue to be in prayer. I encourage you to, to uh, uh, join us and on our Zoom webcast tomorrow or on Monday uh, evening. If you uh, have been a part of our women's Bible study, you will receive uh, information from uh, uh, the uh, facilitator of the Bible study. They are, are studying uh, uh, the Phyllis Shire 
uh, text uh, book of Breathe, Making Room for the Sabbath. And, and, and you'll be able to, uh, through web uh, uh, or, or casting and through video chat, uh, conferencing, we'll, you'll be able to interact with your sisters as you continue that study on Monday. I encourage you, if you would like to participate in our Wednesday Word with Friends Bible study, that you'll be able to do the same. I'll be teaching and we'll be finishing the first chapter of the letter to the Colossian church. We can still be the church and we don't have to be here in the building to, to be able to get that done. Family, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. We'll see you next time. Brothers and sisters, if you're watching this video and you've been uh, uh, encouraged and inspired by what you've heard, if the Holy Spirit may be speaking to your spirit right now, and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, even in this video, even uh, in this connection across the, uh, uh, the, the webcast, you can give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are, as our uh, four parents would say, outside of the ark of safety, if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you that you can surrender your life to him right now, right where you are, that you can turn to God, that you can acknowledge your sin, that you can profess your faith in Jesus Christ as the son of the living God who died on the cross of Calvary, who was uh, buried in a broad tomb, who rose on the third day with all power in his hands and sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you, even right now. If you can make that profession and believe in your heart, salvation is yours right now. We invite you to reach out to us uh, uh, and we will uh, be with you to journey with you, with you in this uh, uh, new life experience that you've gained, this eternal life. You can reach out to us uh, through our website or you can reach out to us through email at ffcoc at familyfellowshipcoc.org or you can uh, uh, reach out uh, through many of, many of our social media outlets to get in contact with us and we'd love to, uh, to have you join our family. Maybe uh, you're, you're, you're watching this on one of our social media platforms and you're not a, a local, you can still contact us. We'll help you to find a church and a, and a faith family uh, that you can join with because this is not meant to be, uh, to be journeyed alone. We invite you to do that. And don't make uh, 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 tomorrow the same as today. Don't, 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 don't uh, leave uh, and turn off this webcast and turn off this video without giving your life and surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. It will be the greatest decision you've ever made in your life. He's waiting for you. The doors of the church are open.